Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Filomena, and I'm the sales coordinator of the school International House Malta. And today we are going to have a fun session uh, explaining you, giving you a lot of tips how you can improve your English while abroad and why it's very, very important to have a good knowledge and when you're abroad. So how can be like very, very helpful and in which situation when you're abroad. Uh, I would like to ask you if you can communicate per chat, uh, mainly in which country are you from? You can just type and just uh, write down your country. Okay, Portugal, Germany. Oh, any Germans? Good. France, Italy. Hi. Switzerland. Greece. Good. Slovenia. Oh, Chile. Great. Spain, Latvia. That's a really international. I really like that. And wow, well, Italy, more Italians. Good. Good. Egypt. That's great. That's great. It's a very, very good start. And now I ask you how many of you have been to Malta? Okay, one. Not yet, two. Yeah. Good. Several times. Uh huh. Okay, good. So at the end of this meeting, we are going to explain more about Malta and our school. Okay, so at uh, the moment we start with our presentation and I'm going to share the screen with you. So just let me know when you see it. it will be a PowerPoint. Okay, can you see it? Just write yes or no. Can you see the screen? Okay, perfect. So guys, we are ready to start. So the title is English and Travel and the 10 tips for everyone. Okay, first of all, I'm sure you've been, when you've been to an English speaking country, you used uh, English language. So um, our purpose of today is uh, how you can improve in which situation you improve. First, why traveling is a lot easier with a good knowledge of English, okay? We, as first thing, we put that language, English is the language of the world. So you can use it in many, many countries and it will help for example, for making bookings, and very important to express what you want to meet locals, which is also very, very important to integrate to another culture when you travel, uh, interacting with other travelers, so the people who are with you in your trip, and also to learn pleasantries and important phrases to better interact. And we will see the last point that gives you a lot of independence, like traveling alone. So let's see. Now the first point, English is the language of the world. Why? It's used everywhere. And also we picked a very important point because uh, hospitality industry is related with traveling, is the main language of hospitality industry. So you will use a lot of vocabulary of traveling and is used amongst travelers. So when you're traveling, you refer to another traveler in English normally because it's the common language, okay? Why making bookings is easier, okay? So it's easier when you're booking to choose directly accommodation, favorite food as well in English. So when you order, you can be more precise and directly choose what you want. So avoiding problems and communication problem and without the proper um, language knowledge. I'm sure you have experienced that many, many times, okay? and we go to the point that you can express what you want. So in many situations, so also, for example, sometimes it's easier when you're ordering food and what you really want. So sometimes if you don't express uh, exactly what you're looking for, it could be like not really what you want. And also for sightseeing recommendation of bus routes and much more. Now, meeting locals. 
So when you go abroad, it's also a nice, a very important way to know the lifestyles of locals and to know, to get to know their cultures, okay, by meeting. Later on, we see how you can meet locals when you're abroad, so our tips. Uh, so it's like also how to understand their culture and to obtain the insight, a fantastic insight to their lives, okay. Interact with other travelers. So here we're not talking about locals, but also the advantages to speak to other travelers. Why? Because we say earlier that is the first language you uh, direct to another traveler and also is more comfortable when you speak English, like a common language, okay? To get information, recommendation, or just to share experiences, okay? Now, important phrases and pleasantries. So uh, you'll be able to understand simple phrases and pleasantries are frequently used while traveling. Okay, we just choose a, a few terms like flying away or many others in traveling vocabulary. So uh, if you use these phrases appropriately, your trip will be also much better. Okay, much comfortable. Now, independence. This is a very important point because sometimes when you travel alone, you don't feel comfortable with a language and you prefer not to travel. But if you have a good basic knowledge of English, this is possible. And you can avoid like the fear, this little scared, like adventuring on your own abroad. So really, it's a very, very important point that we uh, really like to highlight. So you are, for example, you get lost, you need information. So you always have the language that can help you. Okay, now I ask you before going to our uh, tips, okay. Do you ever experience one of these uh, points mentioned earlier? Like how many of you traveled alone? So it happened often to you that you travel alone and English language actually helped in your trip. Try to think in a place that you've been alone, if it's the case. And if you notice that the English language or a basic knowledge of English helped you and in which case for example you got lost and you asked for information and the english language helped you okay we have here mm -hmm. of course before corona yeah we know we are trying to travel again uh-huh in corfu right and you asked for information when you were lost or which other cases you see amsterdam okay as you can see with English language, we can interact in many, many countries, even if it's not. Okay, booking a ticket, very good. Lost luggage on flight to Australia, also very, very important. Okay, Airbnb host helped me to find a coronavirus test center, very useful as well. Ordering food in some restaurants or cafes. Okay, as I notice here, it's very important that you uh, named many places. So not only like English speaking countries, which is one of the points at the beginning that we first uh, named. So it's very, very good. Ordering restaurant coffees, okay. So for example, here. You experience it like, uh, few phrases and some simple phrasing that you frequently used give us example even a simple phrases that you used when traveling just fantasy what can you use in the bus too as well yes how you can buy tickets, for example. Okay. So here, what we mean is frequently used phrases like, uh, I, um, like in the lost luggage, what can you use? Okay. Ordering cafes and in bars. Okay.
here. How many of you interact uh, with other travels when they are abroad? And actually, you can also make good friends on this occasion. So if you can give us example, and if it happens to you. So do you often meet other travelers when you are abroad? Yes or no, or just give me short answers. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, good. I saw a sentence for the previous slide. Is there a nice cafe restaurant near this hostel? Okay, very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We go back for it to the other one. It is very common that you met locals when you were abroad. Yes, no, sometimes just uh, give me an idea. It's for if it was easier for you or it was kind of hard. Was it easy or difficult to meet locals? Depending on the language, yes. Here we are always talking about that you have a basic good knowledge of English and the other person as well. So in the country, it depends on the level of the person you're talking to, okay? But on average, it's good that you, uh-huh, it was easier, good. Mm -hmm. Our message here is when, when you go abroad, it's always nice also to see it as an integration with another culture. So we really encourage this in our school as well, when uh, our students come, okay? It was easier, good. So mainly our replies are, it depends on the country and on the language level of the other person, but on average is not difficult if we really want to interact, okay? Good. And let's see the other point. Please express what you want. So give me examples what you really um, found it useful with English, English language. It's like food, for example. Give me an example of food when you really found hard. If were you in a situation that it was really hard to communicate, like how you wanted your meal properly cooked. Did you experience this situation? Or what other situation did you experience? Okay, guys, examples of your experience. Like you've been in a restaurant, you were not satisfied with the meal. Okay, did you ask for like a proper, with the proper vocabulary, if it happened to you? In your trips? Or okay, also bus routes, so it depends. Mm -hmm. Right. Bookings. I'm sure, like in English, what was the typical Maltese this with form? With form? Uh huh. Porridge in Scotland. That must be hard. Okay, so this is uh, related also with the making booking. So you can do it when you are in a restaurant or we can do it also online. Uh, nowadays, everything can be done online and especially with COVID, uh, the delivery service as well. You have apps also in Malta where you can choose food. Okay, so you have to really be uh, specific to get what you want. Okay, now our tips. Let's see if we can help you. So we selected a few, few tips, very important for us to improve this time your English when you are abroad. So the first advice is speaking. Okay, then we see one by one. And listen, pay attention on your listening. 
and learn a new word every day. Okay, make friends, have a debate, so starting to discuss with people, find an English language student partner, improve your skill at a language school, join guided tours, join activities to improve your English and join an English club. Now, we are going to see all of them, okay? Individually. Speak, why is important, okay? So the thing is, when you move to a foreign country, sometimes it's hard to understand natives, depends also with the regions, they are from Scotland, Ireland, wherever, so each one has his accent. But it's important to don't be shy and start speaking, not thinking about the accent. So think about to pronounce the current uh, the, the sentence correctly, and always thinking that you're you're not alone. So if you do mistakes, just jump on it and start talking, which is this is the level when you can really improve. Okay. And so when you keep on doing and you practice that, so give you confidence. And then you can really improve your pronunciation and vocabulary. So it's, it's like a learning new instrument or sport. Then one is in the brain, you can do it again and we will be there. So your knowledge will be there live. Okay. And uh, give me examples of countries you've been. This time we talk about English speaking countries where you've been and it was hard to understand locals. Ireland, mm -hmm. very well. Right, more countries. And Scotland, sure. Great, okay, let's move on. Very important. Okay, it's pay attention. Okay, listening can be a TV show, can be a movie, or as we say, when you are abroad, so with people talking. So you can always listen, try to memorize the pronunciation, and then repeat it again when you are in the next conversation with another person. So it's always like really helping the repeated system by like listening, 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 and then will stay in your mind. That's what we hope. Okay, so listening point is very, very important, even though, as we said, the uh, accent is also another word apart, so the accent of locals, but mainly it's very, very important that we practice listening. Okay, now this trick of uh, learning a new word every day. So you can do it like walking in the street and try to memorize like few words like bakery or more and more and more. So it can be like visual. It's a very, very helpful way. And, uh, and then try to build sentences with this word. And then you, when you keep saying this word like daily, it will be easy to memorize it, okay? So learn a new word, try to build sentence and use that. So that's our really, really good tip to practice. It can be also listening friends talking or locals talking that you you will notice that like okay today i heard a lot this word for example and then you will listen to again and you will hear it in the street so like pay attention of the word you see repeated during your day make friends okay so makes friends a very good important very important also for motivation because you can be very very motivated to have new friends and to learn from them, okay? So uh, we always uh, really recommend to don't uh, like stay alone, to don't be shy, just to jump on the culture and locals and just try to talk. And then we see how, how to make friends because it's also very important when you are abroad. So this is also very important. So try to discuss different topics, of course, it depends on the conversation. If you're at dinner, in a dinner, for example, with friends and try to uh, 
use as much words you can. So a variety of vocabulary. This is also very important to don't to try to don't use the same same words because you're learning remember one word every day. That's what we wish. So you can uh, build more sentences so to have a really uh, various speech with more uh, more words. So with this, you can also have a discussion in different topics. It can be like uh, learning football vocabulary or food vocabulary, but this is with the time. So the more experience you get, the more you learn. Okay, so uh, here, okay, it's mentioned listening as well. So, but also uh, really uh, life experience. Okay. Now, how we can make friends and also practice English. So here we select uh, find an English language student partner. This is very common when you go abroad and you want to uh, practice uh, your language and maybe the other person as well want to practice your native language. There are many, many schools or libraries or centers where you can find these ads normally. And it's a, like a language exchange partner. And it's a very, very useful thing because it's normally an exchange. Uh, it's a free exchange, normally it's in a bar and you both have a coffee and you can have, uh, normally it's like half an hour and half an hour. So you meet for an hour and you try to speak your language and to teach the other person and the other person try to check your mistakes. It's very important checking the mistakes because we can learn better, okay? Now, how many of you had uh, an English language student partner when you were abroad? So, for example, the one who told me they were in Ireland or in Scotland, did you uh, have an uh, English language student partner? And where did you find it? Oh, you didn't, sadly. Okay. And the one who had, if you can tell me where, where you met him and how you found it. This is also um, a spontaneous activity. You can also, actually you, you can also put announcement and oh, there are a few websites as well and you can propose yourself as a language exchange partner. Okay. Uh-huh, you have an English partner, you speak Spanish. Okay, thank you for the contact. Uh-huh. Very well. So in this case, the exchange was English and Spanish, and I think it was, how was the experience, good? So I hope so. Normally you are a very good experience and uh, you are in contact later on with that person. Also when the trip is over, normally it's a good to build a friendship. Guided tours, as many of you know, probably there are also these free guided tours in the cities that are very, very useful, especially when you're just arrived in a foreign country. So it's like you participate to these guided tours, normally you can subscribe online, and then you join a group. You join a group normally is in the center of a city and they can show you the place, but also it's a good, good opportunity to speak English with the other, with the tour guide and the, with the other group. So in this case as well, don't be shy and try to communicate as much as you can, okay? And this is normally sightseeing to know the city, but also uh, to know, more people and um, many of these tours they organize like uh, they meet at the end at the end of the tour the uh, normally the people who connect they stay together and it's all instantaneously you, you just make friends and they go for dinner or if you are sociable for example it's very very important that so who had experience of joining a guide tour and how it was So did you join a guided tour when you were abroad? Even the free tour or paying as well? And if you met people there, how many of you had this experience? Mm -hmm. So a couple. 
Good. Oh, yes. Erasmus. Erasmus program is the best way to start. Okay. Languages and meeting new people. Uh-huh. Spain. Uh-huh. Okay. In this case, yes, could be could be like hard when the guy did a strong accent, but also we have time to just raise your hand and ask when you don't understand. So normally they are very patient, the tour guides. Good. So I noticed you had positive experiences. I'm glad to hear so. Very well. Okay. Other tips, activities. So not only guided tours, we have a lot of activities. For example, courses like cooking class. How many of you took a cooking class? Not very common, but some they do. Actually, we need to organize in our school. Okay. Or uh, it could be also a team. So if you practice some sport, you can try to find a team in the place where you're living. Okay, well, in Thailand, it must be amazing as well as experience. Okay, this is just an example. Then there are a wide variety, uh, variety of activities. Okay, English club. Okay, what English club are? So the English clubs are, so you can join a club. There are also like online pages. So you start your search normally online and then you select. So normally you meet in a bar or in a club. So, and you meet people from uh, normally natives and other English learners, okay? And uh, the difference is that the atmosphere is really relaxed, so easy going. So maybe also the uh, motivational aspect when you're speaking it's better because you feel more relaxed and you can speak fluently. So this happened to certain people, the, for example, the one who are really shy uh, and joining an English club could be a very good option, okay? Uh, English club could be also, uh, not only meeting people in a bar, but you can also do activities together, okay? Like going and hiking, for example, organizing dinners and uh, it's not always, only the same group. So the good thing is also new people are joining. So you can have the opportunity to meet new friends and it's not a static thing. So something's really always changing. English club, how many of you joined one when you were abroad? Let's see your experiences. Any English club when you've been to UK, Ireland, Scotland, or US or whatever? Okay, you organize one. Okay, voluntary service in Italy. Mm -hmm. It's good. We have also an organizer, so which is very, very good. Okay. And also can be like small or big. So from 10 to 20 people. I've been to huge, huge, uh, it's like uh, it was really a crowd, but I also been to quiet ones just for dinners or just simply hiking. Okay. Uh, the one who organized one, may I ask you which activities included or was just conversation in a bar? Mm -hmm. Games, very important as well. Discussions, games, and conversations. Mm -hmm. Very well. So as you can see, you, it's like also a creative thing. <clears throat> so you can choose activities. Okay. Very well. Now, let's see what we have next. That's the language school. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, the one in Glasgow, I just read very well. It was an amazing experience because you had the opportunity to meet a lot of people and practice your English. Okay, so as you can see, in many, many countries, there are these English clubs. So sometimes you're maybe just lost, just arrived, but it's easy to find them. Also, just do a quick Google search and you'll find one. Or maybe with your, your friends, you ask, and then I'm sure, I'm sure that um, wherever you go, there is one, okay? So, uh, of course, you, you named Erasmus program. So in that case, you were studying and practicing. But if you go abroad, for example, on your own or with a friend uh, later on after Erasmus or, or just even before, uh, and you decide to stay there for a while, let's say, uh, say in an English speaking country, you do activities and everything, but also you want to practice in a school. So this is a good um, like opportunity, for example, to study in the morning a few hours, and then in the evening dedicate uh, to activities and your, your free time, okay? So uh, this is totally up to you, but normally uh, when you go abroad and your level is like um, A2s, like always starting maybe intermediate or basic, um, we have uh, like a lot of students that prefer to do this combination. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, Studying in a school, it's a big advantage if you have time, of course. And it's like give you this uh, strong, uh, for example, grammar base where like you travel, you're not sure of some expression you're using. And especially it happens to me as well that uh, my local friends were not checking my mistakes. Maybe because they told, uh, oh, this is not nice. Maybe she, she won't feel okay when I correct them. But uh, then I found a solution and I thought, okay, they don't want to upset me, so they won't correct me. And uh, then I found a school directly. So uh, the lifestyle could be studying and going out and meeting locals and then improving and practicing all the tips we explained before. So everything from speaking to listening, learning new words and join activities. So our tips are all in there. I hope you use them all or some of them when you go abroad. And now let's focus about us. So we mentioned learning in a school and now I will start introducing briefly our, uh, our school. So International House Malta, uh, we have a motto and it's teaching the world to talk. This is very, very important. Our um, goal is to talk. So uh, as we said, because uh, speaking is the most important part when you can, in this case, uh, the topic of today is traveling. Okay. And we are part of IHWO, which is International House World Organization. So to be a part of uh, this organization, it's for us uh, a huge responsibility, but also we have benefits. IHWO uh, are 160 schools, in 53 countries. So you can have, for example, International House in Spain, uh, because we have IH Madrid, IH Barcelona, IH Valencia, and so on. Uh, for example, in Ireland, we have IH Dublin. So it's like a, um, a big, big um, school system, and we are all part of IHWO. So what are the responsibilities? So in, we, first of all, is high quality. So our courses need to be uh, high quality courses because our teachers need to have at least CELTA or DELTA qualification, which are what Cambridge is asking for teaching. So CELTA, for example, is the minimum we ask to a teacher. So it's like a method you learn uh, following Cambridge steps on how to teach. And, um, and of course, there is also a continued training for continuous training for our teachers. And uh, the trainings are really like um, international, like online sessions, and we will really provide that. Benefits. So training is also benefits, not also responsibility. And access to free materials and resources that we get from International House War Organization. And also is internationally recognized professional development courses. This is also an important point. 
Our centers, okay, our centers, this is Suihi, is the district where our main school is located. Then we have Paradise Bay, which is a resort for star where we organize a summer camp. Later, I will tell you more about it. And then online lessons. So due to COVID, we started our online lessons and they're going pretty well. So they work it a lot. And now we are continuing. So we are receiving still requests for online lessons. Okay. Now, this is Moto. <laughs> you can see IH symbol. So the district is here. Okay. And Suihi is very close for, for the one who, who visited Malta, it's very close to St. Julian's. It's literally five minutes walking or even less. And so you can reach St. Julian's. St. Julian's is the district where you have a lot of restaurants and cinema and bars. So it is the party place, party area. And we are very close to that. So the main center, the main center offers a variety of, of courses. So the, the most common is general English. Of general English, we do 10, 20, or 30 lessons per week. So it can be a light course, so with 10 lessons, uh, a general with 20 lessons, and an intensive one with 30 lessons. Our courses are normally in the morning. So in the morning, you start at 9 and you finish at 12.30 if you take the 20 lesson. If you want to stay longer and you take the intensive one, you will finish in the afternoon. So from 2.30 p.m., you will be free to join activities and everything and to explore Malta. Teacher training, other courses that we organize for teachers. We have specific dates, but we can also organize tailor-made courses if we have a minimum of four uh, students, four teachers who want to join. So we can organize dates for them. Uh, frequent courses are exam preparation. So if you want to prepare to, for example, your Cambridge exam, we provide also exam preparation. If you are, for example, a parent and a child, we can offer a family program. So you have a special rate to be a uh, family and much more because we have uh, like business English or whatever you can practice or one-to-one -one lessons if you want to uh, improve um, a special sector or fields like, uh, um, yeah, enterprise vocabulary or tourism. So, we are open to everything and normally it's one-to-one. -one. If not, we can create a group. Our school is open all year round. It's always Monday to Friday, our courses. And uh, you can join this course if you are 17 plus. So um, for underage, uh, we can create groups, always minimum four students. But we, uh, the main offer for uh, teenagers and young students is the summer camp. That later on, I'll tell you more about it. Okay. Accommodation. So we offer our residence is very, very close to our school, literally located at two minutes walking. And we have a wide range of accommodation types. So you can have the double, triple, quadruple room. The quadruple normally is the cheapest. And also you can have single. We have a few singles, but still possible. It's self catering very important because uh, it's like a shared apartment. I always say, because specifying is that there are no meals included. So it's like sharing an apartment with other students. And it's, uh, it's very big. So maximum capacity will be like 84 students. So uh, it's huge kitchen and uh, there won't be problem of space for that. And it's for students that uh, are 18. So you must be minimum 18. Underage, uh, the other option is host families. Our host families are located in the area and you can have standard or shared rooms or single rooms, okay? Here we go to our Young Learners Summer Camp. So the Young Learners Summer Camp, first of all, is located in the north part of Malta and it's called Paradise Bay Resort. It is a resort for stars, and it's an all-inclusive package. This is for young students, so from eight to 16 years old. And this summer will be from the 12th of June to the 20th of August. So it's a really fun program because it includes, so the students will start 
uh, their uh, G20, so general English, 20 lessons per week. So they will be busy every morning from Monday to Friday studying English. Afternoon, they will do the activity programs, so activity around the area, but we also go to St. Julian's, so the party area, for example, bowling and more activities. And uh, excursions, so if there is a full day excursion, for example, if you stay a Saturday or a Sunday, we also organize, of course, full day. So you are always busy. So students are always busy. Uh, is included private medical insurance, and of course, uh, the supervision, so always 24 hours, and airport transfers. The only thing you have to do is buy your ticket because we don't include flight tickets. So if you join the Young Learner Summer Camp, then it's like, just book your ticket and then we'll pick you up at the airport and we go together to the resort. Actually, the lessons are in the resorts so like meeting room of the hotels adapted to classrooms and accommodation is in the resort, of course, and it's a quadruple room for students. And uh, it's a really, really nice location, this part of Malta. The island you saw on top is Gozo. It's a smaller island. Sometimes we go there on Sundays, depends on the activities. Okay. So online now. So online are our lessons. So we organize one-to-one -one and also group courses. We offer three packages basically for one to one. We have the 10, five, so two packages of 10 lessons and one of five. The difference is the duration because sometimes students prefer to have 45 minutes and others 60 minutes. So a full hour or 45. Group courses, as I mentioned earlier, you have the light English, which was the one of 10 lesson, general of 20, and then exam preparation, English for work, or business or so on. Okay. Now, why? Why to choose Malta as destination? So Malta uh, has two official languages, which is English and Maltese. And the history, the history you will see when you walk around, it is a mix of cultures. So you see beautiful churches and really a nice, nice atmosphere. Well, this picture is mainly of the sea, which is also good to enjoy. So and the climate, of course, the climate. So it really allows you to enjoy the sun all year round. And uh, the airport has a lot of connections. So it's not like isolated, but really accessible for anywhere in Europe. It's a really busy airport. And now, why? Why our school? You can see here a few pictures of our school. So this is the main entrance. Then we have a roof on top. The roof, well, normally we do like a welcome uh, for our students on Mondays, we offer like uh, Maltese patisserie at the beginning, just the first day. And uh, the other picture here, it's a garden that we have. So like a place where they can have a break uh, during the lesson or after the course. So the main, uh, the main future of our school, so the small class size. So having small classes mean to have pay more attention to each student. So during Corona now it's like maximum eight or less before it was 12 maximum. Okay, teachers, as I said, they are high trained also because of the requirements of CELTA and Cambridge. And also the approach, the approach is very open door because they can, students can feel free to ask questions. So we are very, very uh, flexible as well. And we love to keep this uh, uh, family atmosphere. So being a small school, as you can see, it's like three floor. Um, being a small school, it's uh, very important to keep this family atmosphere. So students can feel really at home and part of a family and not just the numbers like in big schools that sometimes can happen. So this is our, let's say, strong point of IH Malta. Uh, let's see uh, if you have questions. Okay, if you have question, please ask me or I leave you here in the chat. Now I stop share. Uh, okay, someone is leaving. Bye, thank you for joining. Okay, I will leave here.
Okay, any request of prices or if you have any doubts or anything you may need. Okay, feel free to contact me. This is the email. Okay, or if you are planning to go and visit Malta soon, just let me know. Okay. Is Maltese still spoken in Malta? Yes, it is. It's still the official language, one of the two. Uh, so you can listen to both uh, Maltese and English. Okay. You have any question regarding our courses? Bye, thank you. Oh, Argentina, bye. Okay, so I would like to thank you. And uh, as I say, uh, if you have any questions, please drop me an email. I'll be very glad to, to reply to you. And we don't teach Maltese, I'm just reading now. It's just English, what we teach. Okay, so bye everybody. And thanks for participating. And